My name's Guy Kesterman. Been a mountain biking kit tester for nearly 25 years. And today, the bike I'm cruising along on is Cotic's new Cascade. <laughs> Gravel adventure bike. <laughs> Sorry, startled a runner there. Morning. Morning. So, looking at the details, you start with this alpaca fork on the front here. You see, you've got Nitto rack mounts there, you've got everything cage mounts, you've got more full rack mounts there, you've got uh, mounts and mud guards as well on the inside. It's still a 12mm uh, through axle on it, but there's also a carbon fork option, or because Sai has very strong views about uh, short travel gravel suspension forks, it's the same height as a 100mm. Uh, it's a full suspension fork for an MTB in its sagged setting. So you can put a SID or something in there if you want and uh, get a full mountain bike uh, style suspension. And obviously, you know, you've got a slightly higher ride position because of that uh, length in the fork, but you can always flip the stem if you want to, or just embrace the fact that it's a just a bit more relaxed, upright ride. And then you've got uh, flared bars, 46 mil wide is standard, but with a little short 60 mil stem on this medium uh, and You've even got the option to uh, have a dropper post fitted if you want. And again, it's not just a little stumpy dropper post. It's a proper 150 mil stroke uh, X-Fusion Manic post on there. Super reliable and the difference a dropper and having slightly wider bars makes on a gravel bike really, really brings home just what a difference those two components make to bike control overall. As it's a Kotic, you've got this really nice 853 uh, side, you know, specifically curates some of the tube shapes on it. Uh, Reynolds tube set, so air hardening steel, absolutely top quality. Really nice welded gussets on there. Uh, you got uh, what they call gas tank mounts. You got mounts all. You can't really see all of them, but mounts all the way down the down tube, uh, up at, above and below for cargo or and for holding this external cable routing on. You've got another bottle cage mount there. You've got the option of this really nice restrap uh, custom frame bag on there, but. You know, you can put bags all over this bike. And again, at the back end, you've got uh, rack and mudguard mounts, uh, little short stubby rack mounts, uh, conventional rack mounts. You've got that classic Cossack wishbone rear stay arrangement there with really skinny uh, steel tubes to give it that floated ride. And even really nice details like that little cutaway stub there for a conventional mudguard. But because it's cut away, it's less likely to clog with mud. And it's got clearance for up to 2.6 tyres on, uh, 29 by 2.6 tyres on there. So absolutely massive space if you want to fully kind of pneumatic up your ride. And you get proper hunt trail wide mountain bike wheels on there. So again, quite heavy duty wheel set on there. I think they just come in under just under 1900 grams. But obviously you know, there's loads of options uh, you can go with. Uh, you know, from XC wheels from Hunt or something like that. I mean, that save you 400 grams straight away. But you know, the whole bike, as, and again, you know, you could make different changes on it. You don't have to run a dropper post. You could lighten this up significantly because in this trim uh, with the bag on, but without pedals on, it weighs 12.4, I think, kilos, which is pretty sturdy. You know, that is the weight of a mountain bike because essentially this is a drop bar mountain bike with a load of extra fixtures and bolts on, which all add weight. I mean, even that uh, alpaca fork is 1.38 kilos and a SID SL ultimate i think is 1.32 so you'd actually go lighter by going suspension but then this bike isn't about ultra light weight or maximum speed it's about just really enjoying the environment going out there and appreciating the landscape and but still on a bike that won't scare the bejesus out of you or restrict you from going anywhere especially if you go even bigger on the tires and get suspension on there so i've been riding this bike a lot but it's time to uh, take you for a quick spun on it to talk through where the real winds are and what it does particularly so, well. So Cy and Kotick are obviously known for steel mountain bikes with really progressive geometry and relatively you've got that going on here. I mean you've got Reynolds 853 main tubes custom to size designs including the oval form top tube, huge amounts of tyre clearance and you've got what Cy calls sure shot geometry. So long shot is what they use on their mountain bikes this is sure shot, but still 69 degree head angle, 74 degree seat angle, 410 mil reach on a medium. So obviously tiny number in terms of mountain bikes, but once you've added a stem and uh, drop bars to it, that's a pretty stretched out bike. And it really, you can really feel that confidence, stability in the ride straight away. And while, you know, there's only so much you can do with a rigid frame, 
that steel really does have that classic kind of warm sprung feel i have ridden some bikes in this category where i've been pretty battered on a steel frame i mean inevitably there are some downsides for going with a steel frame and with drop bars you know drop bars are heavier than flat bars drop bar shifters heavier than flat bar shifters steel frame not light <laughs> you know especially steel fork i don't normally like steel forks at all so i'm surprised by how well this is ridden though i'd still argue that morning for the smoothest ride you should definitely even if you still want a rigid fork definitely opt for the carbon fork Cyrus is a really high quality carbon fork on the uh, rigid option so if you don't need all the bosses and mountings and you know you're not totally in love with that steel fork look because i will admit they are tapered leg steel fork looks beautiful but don't necessarily expect miracles in terms of the vibration it will save you from or at least make sure you run tire pressures as low as you can because the bigger the tire the more crucial it is you drop the pressure to get that proper float you're probably expecting from it as you can see you know it doesn't mind dodging dog walkers by just plowing across the middle of a lumpy field and I'd be getting kicked all over the place on a conventional gravel bike with 40 mil tyres on something like this and also I'm not concerned if there's a brick end hiding in the grass it's going to bounce up and over it and that's applicable whether it's the local dog walking fields or riding at night in the Himalaya Yes, you got caught out just gives that extra versatility and survivability having that extra tyre capacity and then like I say you will be surprised I mean these wolf packs kind of one of my secret favourite brands you know actually without being too immodest I turned Sai on to using this brand thank you very much a pretty unheard of German brand so on Tim but there are loads and loads of options for really fast rolling light high volume 29er tyres now or alternatively proper chonky 2.6s if you want to uh, really frighten the local enduroists and because you have got this sure shot geometry and you've got room for up to 29 by 2.6 inch tyres and it's running 225 wolf packs at the moment so fast cross country tyre and a dropper post and a flared bar so when it does slip a bit on the tyres there you know you can slide it and steeze it and bring it back in unlike a normal gravel bike which always feels a bit precarious you can properly hey, there we go <laughs> little bunny up over that log there you know it's not a mountain bike but it's a damn sight closer than these kind of bikes normally are and that means you can have a lot more fun mucking around on it or just take it to rougher tougher places if you're adventuring and expect to take more in your stride and worry about technical sections less but i have to say it's a proper hoop around this single track here <laughs> and of course you can even fit a 100mm suspension fork you go hey there we go slide it in in fact it'll even be lighter with a 100mm suspension fork if you put a SID SL in so in terms of what's between you and the ground it's basically a rigid mountain bike or a hardtail depending on how you rig it when you get onto faster firmer surfaces you've got all the touch points of a road bike so you've got all these different hand positions especially with the flared bars you know you can tuck in out of the wind a bit more easily get on the hoods and it's just a really different vibe you know as as efficient as a 29er mountain bike is 
you know, this is rolling perfectly well, and obviously it's rolling the same as it would do if it had a flat bar. And something just feels a bit odd. I mean, some people really like that, you know. I actually love thrashing my chisel along and chewing up roadies. But for most people, if they go in for this adventure vibe, then a drop bar just, well, seems more appropriate. So it's not like this bike is designed to replace anything that Kotick are already doing, you know. You've got the Escapade or you've got the Solaris Max either side of this in terms of more road bike feel or properly progressive steel mountain bike feel. It's just another option, you know, for whether it's nipping out on the cycle path, exploring like this, or properly going far, far out there, foreign. You know, it's just a really nice alternative. Morning. And as mountain bikes themselves get more and more capable, there's now a bigger gap. Like there's a void they're leaving behind for something a bit more simple, a bit more visceral. You know, you certainly don't have to take this to bike park Wales or the jankiest descent in the peak to get your off-road thrills. But on the other hand, if you do come into those sections, you know, if you do come into rougher sections with the mountain bikers preconceptions, it's got the tires and it's got the geometry that's going to help you out. So yeah, I mean, you could argue the whole mountain bike versus gravel bike thing on and on and on, but this is a really, really lovely bike to ride. It's secure, it's confident, it's fun. It's got a nice vibe, it's even got a nice bell. Morning. Thanks very much, cheers. You know where you are? Yeah. All right, okay. It's just a feel good bike, that's what it is. And it feels good, in fact, arguably, it feels better and better the further you go. Because, you know, you just chill out into that slightly slower rolling, slightly fatter, lower pressure tire, because at the end of the day, you're less fatigued, it's more comfortable, and actually you probably have gone nearly as far, or maybe even further, because you're not as fatigued. I don't know, I could talk round and round and round on this bike, but at the end of the day, it's super versatile. It's got that proper lovely Scottic steel vibe and every fixture you could possibly want. Morning mate. Hi up. For doing whatever you want to do on it, whether that's proper adventure or just going to work on something that's just a bit different from a hypermarket hybrid. Massive thanks to Cy for lending me the bike. Uh, thanks to Giro Cycling, PT's Crud and Sweet Protection for sponsoring the channel. And uh, massive thanks to my Patreon supporters who will be watching this video first ad free uh, before it comes on to general release on YouTube. And they get other, you know, they get a sort of better service in terms of answering questions and other things. And they get stuff early, extended edits as well as a thank you for a small monthly donation, which really makes a difference to keeping the channel running. So thanks to those guys, but thanks to you for watching. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider clicking the subscription button, click the notifications button so you know when the next video comes up and give this a thumbs up like and tell all your mates about it because there's more videos on kit and bikes coming up on this channel all the time. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV, chatting on probably too much about the Kotick Cascade adventure bike. <laughs>